And we are live for yet another. You get two worn pieces this week, folks. This one's a special one because this guy doesn't do many interviews, but he's here on worn pieces. And I'm talking about the owner, the CEO, the great man himself, Bill Thompson. Bill Thompson, thank you so much for being here this evening. I, first of all, it's an honor to have you here. Well, it's an honor to be here, and it's Bill Thomas. Thomas? That's yeah. what, didn't I say that? No. Oh, I said, Tom, you know why? <laughs> I got David Thompson on uh, on Wednesday. <laughs> oh, there you go. So at least we're close. Damn. Bill Thomas, I've already screwed it up. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to be here. So. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, let me ju just say – I have bought every single game, you, just about every single game you guys have, okay? And I really cannot believe how much you guys put out in a year. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, it's absolutely fa fantastic. Some of the stuff you've, you've put out has been just completely through the roof, and I've just been blown away with. And one of them particularly that I I, I really want to point this out, and and that's Interceptor Ace. I play. I've played this, and, and this is probably one one of my favorite games I've played in the last three or four months, and it, I'm just blown away. With, and and Gregory Smith, anything he seems to touch is turned into gold. So, right. I mean, look at you. You're you you you're just knocking it out of the park, my friend. But hey, listen. This is instead of talking about all the games, we're going to be talking about a lot of things. And, and people that uh, have questions, please put in the questions. Helen's here. She'll she'll take care and make sure I see them at some point. We will get to them. But, Bill, tell me a little bit about the company. OK, um, Compass started. Oh, God, back in 2005. Mm -hmm. okay. It was three guys. N nobody knew us in the industry. We were nobodies. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, we had no contacts with any of the industry leaders of anybody, really. We didn't go to conventions. So we started a company and, and it was a hobby. Hey, let's have some fun, do some games. The mm -hmm. first person, um, one of them went away probably within a year, two years of the first release, silent okay. law. Okay. Th things happen. It's like a partnership. It's like a marriage. You never oh, know. Sure is. You date, and then when you start working together, it's a whole different ball game. Uh -huh. But big guy, have all the respect for him. He moved along. Okay, so Compass was a part-time company, it's just a hobby for years. We probably produced in twelve years, maybe twenty games, uh -huh. maybe twenty-two. So about two, three years ago, maybe four, I did. I said, "Hey, there's, there's a, there's a um, opportunity here." For traditional war games, uh -huh. and I said, I said, let's go forward with it. Okay, uh -huh. so we decided to um, we decided to move forward with making Compass more of a full time gig. Okay, the other partner who still works for me. Okay, um, we parted ways on the partnership and good. So he still works for me, and that's Ken Dingley. Okay. okay. He's still an employee of mine, and he does a good job. Okay, so it's so I became the um, only partner left. Okay, and I bought them all out. Okay, the interesting thing is about I. It really changed my thinking when my son came to me. Uh -huh. He graduated college, and he said, "Hey, Dad, can I come work for you?" And then the dawn, then it hit me. Okay. I'm not mm -hmm. doing this for me, okay? I'm 50-some years old, okay? And I said, hey, this could be a legacy. Now it's not only me. So he's in working with me. And so that's how Compass Games really evolved to where it is today. I think in the last last year, we put out 25 products. Yeah. Okay? Um, we're on track to um, do about 25 this year. Okay, we've already done like 12, 10 or 12. Yeah. Okay, and it's just been an amazing ride, and the customers are great. Okay, we couldn't do it without the customers. Uh -huh. so that's really an overview of where Compass is. Now, you know, the, of course, this show is sponsored by Miniature Markets, but but uh, you know, I'm gonna get my stuff in. But 
when when your games come out on miniature market i mean the day they land if you don't get it that same day it's gone it's i i mean that's how fast it sells out i mean your stuff is like boom 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 and if you're not in line to get it boom so we're working on uh, up in the orders because your games are that good the people that you have that are designing for you oh. i mean from richard Borg, greg m smith john butterfield i mean it's just amazing i mean it's absolutely amazing what 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 what, what, what the people that you're able to bring in now i'm going to i'm going to hit on a touch, touchy subject here and and it, it could be a little touchy now a couple of weeks ago i had we were doing worn pieces and when we were talking about actually i'm going to pull out the game here uh, the fold the gap here okay Okay, it was $140. And I opened it up and I went, oh, boy, you know, I, I think I would have liked a little bit more. That was before I read the rule book, of course. Okay, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to backtrack a little bit because this is a very, very good game, a very interesting game. And I've, I had it on the table and I like it. I don't worry about paying about money, but people complain a lot about how expensive the games are and why is that that's something that they always that they always want to put out there why is it a little bit more than than other other companies should we say oh well it's something i've heard for the last 15 years mm -hmm. and and again it's getting worse because we're out there more well let's let, let, let's put it to bed here okay. i mean we, we've got a tremendously large audience watching and i want to put it to bed because i watched your show this last friday and you answered it but i wanted you to answer it again here so everybody can hear it and i think it's a very important and i think people need to take a second look at things go ahead up, please up until two years ago a hundred percent of our games were made in the u.s mm -hmm. okay not china not anywhere else, okay? Um, so they've all been made in the U.S., okay? We we decided that to compete with one mappers, one mm -hmm. map game, we had to go to China for the boards, mounted right. boards, okay? okay? But other than that, okay, if it's not a one map game, okay, with a mounted board, it's all made in the U.S. Okay, and, with, go on. And and for and for me, that's fantastic. Okay, because listen, regardless of whatever, I was going to buy every game that you made, anyways. And, and and that's truth. I'm not telling you that because you're here. I'm telling you that because I really enjoy the variants and everything you did. You know, 25 games a year, and from all these different types of fantastic designers, there is a unbridled passion that you guys show at your company. And that needs to be seen more. And then on top of it, you, you're you paying an American salary. You're not paying sweatshops, okay? You're paying American salaries, okay? And I think that alone, people, for the extra $10, $12, listen, I'll hand you a $100 bill now. <laughs> oh, people have no idea what the price difference is, though. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's unbelievable. It really is. What I could, and I won't say on okay what i could get folder gap done in china for mm -hmm. it, oh it, it's unbelievable the now, cost and i could sell more okay yeah. but it comes to me again it's it's something and and the funny thing is we were a new company and we chose that route mm -hmm. which is a hard route to go down okay you're coming into a new company and you're the most expensive mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, we chose that route because we have printers in the, in Massachusetts, right up the road. Okay, and, and we like to we like to be able to um, support America and made in U.S. and it's cost us. I'll be honest with you, it's cost us sales over the years because some people oh it's too and up until about and it just gets so. I've been hearing more and more. Right. Why is and now with our new line because you'll see the big difference, okay? Mm -hmm. When you put on a map, they're heavier, and when you look at those cost games, they're pretty well in line with the marketplace. Okay, 
like France 1944, um, other games that we do are pretty well in line with other in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, oh. but I still am going to continue to um, continue produce in the U.S. I I think that's fantastic. And you kind of glitched there a little bit for, for a second, but Okay. It, it's okay. But, you know, basically what he said is he's going to keep producing in the U S and, and that, that, that attributes to the passion that you have. So, so in order to print it in the United States, and, and, and this is the way I see it. So how do you compete? I'll tell you how you compete. You make quality games. You bring in great people. You bring in the John Butterfields. Uh, uh, again, like I said, uh, Mr. Smith, um, Richard Borg, you know, you're bringing in top talent. That's got to cost you as well. It does. But but the funny thing is we bring in, um, like, Combat and Blue Water Navy were two oh. that were not well-known designers. We took a risk on them because we do that as well. And, oh, <laughs> great sales, great oh. games. I, it, I, I'm looking at both of them right now. They're right there. I, I mean, Combat, I absolutely loved. I absolutely loved. I thought it was unique. It was different. Blue Water Navy, my uh, my good friend who I know is out in the chat, did a, a fantastic video on it and got me hyped up on it and, and to get it. And that's uh, uh, Mo from uh, Mo's Game Table. Uh, I, if you ever get a chance to check that out, uh, he did a wonderful job with that video. And I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, another fantastic game. I mean, you're hitting it out of the park with good, good, solid games. I, I, I mean... What more could you say, right? <laughs> yeah, we do get a lot of um, – I'll digress here. We do get a lot of feedback that it's expensive to buy our games overseas, mm -hmm. mostly in the EU, okay? And my, we get a lot of games that are sold through, through distribution, which mm -hmm. to pre-order from us really isn't um, – because we don't have EU-friendly shipping, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's just for pre-orders. So that's a decision. It's it's a very complicated situation for us, okay? So we have no problem. We sell a lot of games to distribution, which is fine, okay? Yeah. So people are getting those games because we're selling a lot of them through distribution. Mm -hmm. and, and and the thing, you know, the, the, the thing is, it, okay, you're not EU friendly. Your site to sell direct. But miniature market sells over overseas, so you know, in a way, if you really want the game, get it from miniature market or or whatever. You know, I, I'm not saying I don't want to be a commercial here, but what I'm saying is by distributing the games out, that kind of eliminates that. So I don't even think that's a, a an an argument that people should have because if you really want the game, you can get them online and get it shipped overseas. But it's just getting it over there is 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 hard in itself, no matter what you do. And, but, but I do think because we because our costs are higher because they are made in the U.S., it mm -hmm. drives costs to them because they somebody pays those customs, mm -hmm. okay? and whether it's the it, the distributor pays them, but he passes them along, I'm sure, to the individual um, customers in Europe. So that's something we're trying to look at and get better at, but I don't know. It unfortunately, some things are tough to rectify. Yeah, uh, yeah. You broke up uh, there again. Could, oh, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Could you just say that again? I'm sorry. Uh, it, yeah. it completely well, cut out. Yeah, I, I think what happens with um, like EU is their issue is because I make it in the U.S. and the cost is expensive. Mm -hmm. okay? Then what happens is when I, when it goes to Europe, even through distribution, the customs have to be paid by somebody. So right. paid off the percentage of the gain. So mm -hmm. it is cost. It does cost them more money, okay, because I make it in the U.S. in um, EU. But like I said, we sell a lot of games indirectly in the EU. So. So let me ask you a quick question. A question: Out of all the games that you've created, which is the game you're most proud of? And it's I, a it's a hard question to think on it. You could do it. 
No, I really can't. No? I, I, I really can't because I'm proud of – equally proud of every game. Could mm-hmm. they – there are some games I wish I had done things different. A little differently? Okay. And we didn't have data and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I, I can't do that. I don't know which – I I really don't know which one's my favorite. Okay. All right. I wanted to see if you had a favorite, you know. I have a favorite kid, but I don't want her to hear it right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the fifth on that one. <laughs> I have two favorite kids. Well, there you go. See, that's the that's the right way to do it. That's the right way. To do it. Uh, but you know, it, it, it's a funny thing, and we started to talk about about it a little bit, and you, you know, you get a lot of flack. Uh, you know, but I think everybody gets a flack, flack, but you know, there's a lot of elitist out there. And, um, you know, the thing that I like to try to do is, is show these games to everybody, you know, Euro gamers, all types of different types of gamers. And my thought is, is that if you could sit there and calculate how to farm, you're going to actually enjoy something that is going to test you even further. And I think wargaming from from a Euro gamer spare, uh, uh, view is the next level. So how do you bridge that gap? Okay, do you now? Now are you guys trying to do anything to to play um, to to put out more games that are kind of you know trying to trying to reach out to the board gamer because board gaming is in a renaissance that has never never been seen. It's in its golden age. Yeah, we did. Um, we did Cargo Express mm-hmm. game. Um, well, I'll be honest with you, it didn't do very well. But then we weren't okay. known in the Euro market at all. Okay. Um, I'll tell you which one: Stellar Horizons, our space game. Oh, um, uh, that has taken off. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing was, we were told, "What right as a war game company do you have to produce a space game?" was what we were told by people. Okay. okay. And we just released that. And I got to say, um, we haven't even started distribution with that. And we're about 75% sold out. Wow. And that is a Euro, uh, pretty complicated Euro game. But people are playing it, having a good time. It just came out maybe three weeks ago. Okay. And I think that's why we put games up on Kickstarter. Is mm-hmm. games that we think will um sort of be their war games but they could be euro they're on the cusp there they, they could um so that's really what we use kickstarter for okay is to get into that market and and we're going to be talking about some of the kickstarters that you have coming out and also everybody in the chat I, everybody that's watching and, and we have you know quite a few people watching um we're going to be giving away uh, bill was nice enough to give away i believe it's battle of the bulge from John Butterfield. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, we're going to be giving that away towards the end of the show. We're going to be doing our dice game. Poor Helen in the chat is going to do that. And Helen, uh, I, I just saw that you you have a bunch of questions, but usually you highlight them, so I don't see them highlighted. So that that's what screwed me up for a minute. So we've got some questions here, and I'm, go- I'm going to shoot them out to you. Uh, just give me a second here, Bill. Just bear with me. Okay, here we go. We have a question from Nathaniel Robinson. Does that really explain all the differences between, say, Tricorn and other uh, Command and Color games, especially when sold by OLGS? Okay. I'm not too sure what he's trying to say here. Hold on here. Can you see that? Does. I think when we were talking about price. Uh, you know, uh, producing in the United States. I, I, I mean, it has to, Nathaniel. I mean, it has to make a difference. I mean, other companies could probably do a, a Richard Board game, and but if you do it in the United States and you do it in China, there's going to be a huge difference. It it, it 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 doesn't matter what game it is. Now, granted, if you're doing print runs of twenty five thousand a game, right? Okay, that's going to drop the price. 
Yeah. If you're printing 10,000 of a game, that's going to drop the price. If you're in the one, if you're in the two to 4,000, it's not going to really be a difference. But um, if, if you're printing north of 10,000 games, then mm-hmm. yeah, it will, that will be a factor as well. Factor of difference of manufacturing it. Mm-hmm. But there is um, print run. But I mean, how well. how hard is it that to make that decision? Okay, Bill. I, I I mean, where do you go? Well, I believe in this game enough to print twenty five thousand. Because boy, I'll tell you, if it doesn't sell, you got them in your family picture next year. Well, and the funny thing is, what Compass does, we have a pre order system, mm-hmm. but we don't have a pre order number. Okay, we're uh-huh. not companies. We I printed games, and people are going to be shocked at this. I printed games that had seventy five pre orders. Oh wow! Oh no, we fund we we um we don't pre orders to me are not a funding mechanism; they're a bottom line mechanism mm-hmm. because I get a better price than if I sell a distribution. So right. we don't use pre orders for cash flow. Okay, so I've done I've done games where I've had 75 pre-orders, I've gone to publication with it, I fund it, and it, and the funny one, one one had like six, like 75 pre-orders, and we ended up selling out of it. I have mm-hmm. other games that get like three, 400 pre-orders, okay, and they stagnate. So we, we take the risk, and, and I think that's something nobody knows out there either. Compass takes the risk, of pre-orders. We, we don't have a thousand pre-orders. We don't have a number that says, hey, I have to hit 500 or this doesn't get published. Mm-hmm. I want a game published because I think it's good. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, I'll publish the game. I'll take that risk. And it, it, it's funny. And it I've done it for the last, we've done over 140 titles now. Mm-hmm. And I, I do it all the time. Now, do I get mad at myself when I have a hit? And I have to reprint. But at the end of the day, so but people, I, I think the two misconceptions that people don't know about Compass is one, we we don't use the pre-order system as mm-hmm. a funding mechanism, okay, or as a mechanism that I got to hit 300 pre-orders to print the game. Right. We don't do that, okay? And we do most of our games up until we started doing the one map, one mountain map. Right, one hundred percent U.S. and now we're doing about eighty percent U.S. Okay. Let me ask you something about that as well. You know, does it, it does it take is it quicker to print in the U.S. than it is in China? Incredibly quicker. Mm-hmm. Okay, I can. So have, you're you're putting out more games. You're giving more quality, more games, and 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 you're funding it here, and you're not waiting on somebody over in China to send you over proofs and all that other. China is a six-month process. Okay, um, domestically, it's probably a two-month process at most. Wow! Because remember, wow. I have four to six weeks before it ships to me. Yeah, because it comes by boat. <laughs> but, but China does good. Let me just say that they do a good quality. They do good quality work. Yes. No doubt about it. And to be honest, some of it's even better than what I can get in the U.S. Okay. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's just a choice we made. It, and it's not – and I apologize if customers think the games are too expensive and all that other stuff, but it's something I believe in. And I don't think I'll ever – I'll always be doing U.S. in U.S. Uh, and, and and then that's something I admire a lot, Bill. I, I admire it. You know, uh, there's a lot of people that are out there that are veterans, uh, like myself. And you know, I'm, I'm currently still working uh, um, for the military. And you know, to hear that, it, it just it, it. Listen, I buy all your stuff anyways, and it just makes me that no matter what you come out with, I'm going to buy. But here's the real thing, Bill. You're putting out quality product. And I mean, I mean, gameplay. Uh, they're some of the best games I've played this year. All right, combat. Which I, I have a question here. I want to ask, and I want to talk a little bit about combat. I, I love that game. 
Uh, James R. asked, is there anything new coming out for combat? Yes. It, there's actually something up on pre-order now. Okay. It's combat 2 that takes the combat situation all the way to Berlin. Oh, um, wow. And the expansion is just as big as the original game. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, that worked on now. And, and combat was made in the U.S. So um, what we did do is on our website, if you go to the products, we did put a we did put an icon on made in the U.S. now, so people can see which games are made in the U.S., which games aren't, so they can say, "Oh, I might understand why it's and, higher than." And I'm I'm glad you said that because we were live, and I'm talking about the game, and I go, "Well, maybe it's made in the U.S." And I looked everywhere on this box. I could not find made in U USA. And if I did that, I think it would have it, it would have call you know just completely took care of a lot of things. But you know, you couldn't find it, couldn't find it on on, on the uh, inside the booklet or anything like that. And I think that's a big thing to to have that little bit of stamp there, believe it or not. Yeah, I, I didn't think so for years because I do what I do. I don't for me, it wasn't something that I wanted to say, oh, I'm making it in the U.S. and other people aren't. Okay, that's a, so we never did it, but we are putting it on the website. Fantastic. Uh, we got another question here. Pacific Tide is being reprinted. How long will it take? Well, and we just kind of almost talked about that. Eh? Nice segue right into it, right? Yeah, that's an interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Because okay. it depends on what I'm going to do with it. Okay. Because I... Part, yes. Depending on the pre-orders, because I didn't want to commit at the time, okay, until we get the pre-orders. Right. It might be a situation where we might go to China for the... Okay. Make it a deluxe with a mounted map. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or we might just reprint it. If we reprint it in the United States, obviously, it's going to be done sooner. Okay, but, but on reprints, see, reprints are a touchy thing. Okay, I'm willing to roll the dice the first time on my pre orders. I'm mm -hmm. not always willing to roll the dice on reprints because I'll tell you why. Because you never know where you've reached that crescendo where yes. you can sell any more games. Where, where where's the ceiling? Where is the ceiling? And and it's almost like playing the stock market. Where am I? Where am I doing this? Where am I going? I I I would roll the dice and do a game on seventy five pre orders quicker mm -hmm. than I would do a game that. So so that's why I like to give it a little time on the to see how many orders we get mm -hmm. for the reprint. That reprint or pre orders do make a difference for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, because again, I don't know if the market, I don't know if the market's going to be flat, and it's right. all fine, and I've got up team copies that I've just reprinted. All right, we got a question here from Lionel Rob. I would like to hear about Zeppelin Raiders and America Bomber, how the idea came about. Oh, I'll tell you that's Greg Smith. <laughs> he he thinks of Greg Smith, so thinks of this stuff. And he emails me like in the middle of the night saying, hey, I've got this great game. Okay. Um, are you interested? And I go, yeah. It's all it's all in Greg Smith's mind. I'll tell you, he comes up with some of the <laughs> – I, I can't even get into that guy's mind. For, and, and, and this is what I'm talking about, passion, quality. Uh, you, you know, you open up a box, Interceptor Ace – uh, again, you, you know, you know, uh, Zeppelin Raiders, you play those games, you're immersed. Okay. You're all in on these games. And, and I, I don't think, you know, where, where some people, I really believe sometimes they rush things out just to get them out. I actually feel that, that some of these games, some of these games are, are the best games I have in my collection well, and they're right. compass games. And, and, and I'm not saying that because you're here. I'm not trying to give you a big shine. I'm telling you what I feel and you know, I'm willing to pay the money. And now I'm even more willing to pay it cuz I know it's made in the United States for the most part. And you don't ha leave here unless you have to. And hey, hats off to you, my friend. Hats yeah. off to you. 
That's that that's big cojones. That and takes the, a lot of bravery. And the other thing you'll see, we'll do games on topics like it came up. We've done like six or seven World War One strategic. Games. Oh, uh, this bum that uh, asked the question. Oh, uh, yeah, Herman, like this, this bum. Guy. Oh, um, has like eight. He, yeah. He's lo he's looking for a job at Compass, believe it or not. Well, I, I well, he's not going to get. <laughs> But he does says. It. <laughs> <laughs> Compass, Compass has H H strategic World War One games. That's rare. Uh, what went into the decision to publish so many games on one topic? That's not the Bulge, Waterloo, or Gettysburg. Great question, Herman. By the way. Okay, and the answer to that is, designers approached me mm -hmm. with games, and. They were all different, meaning they all had different scales. You play three of the games, three of the World War I games, and they're all different. They all give you a different experience. So for me, it was designers just had them designed, and I liked them. Mm -hmm. so, so I guess that is really the answer I've got, okay, that as, if I like the game, okay, then I'll publish the game. Okay. Okay, and we actually have another World War One game that's Attrition of Souls. That's a very easy, uh, I mean, very low complexity, more of a war game, more of a Euro. Right. Okay. But um, so we have that coming out. Wow, fantastic! Tommy D asks question: Why? So why can't the mountain maps be made here in the U.S.? I love uh, mountain maps, but why China for those? Thanks. Because to get them done in the U.S., mm -hmm. okay, is six to seven times more, maybe five, five to seven times more than to make them in China. Mm -hmm. the, the games, if I, if I put mountain map, I'll give you a perfect example. Okay, Folder Gap could never have mountain maps because there's too many maps. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but if I put a map in any one of my games, it's going to up the game by at least forty, fifty dollars. Okay, because right. map because again, it's a very mounted maps are. Um, don't ask me why, but there's a it's tougher to do than mm -hmm. regular maps, and very few places do them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can get thin cardboard maps okay okay but they're not going to be comparable that's why everybody goes if you ask anybody okay there, there might be a few that do it in the united states mm -hmm. mostly everybody goes out out of the country for mountain maps all right let's go here boy we got a lot of questions for you you're a popular guy my friend the mighty mo from mo's game table question for bill what the expected ship date on air and armor. Um, and we're all excited about that one, my yeah. friend. That is going to be around September. Around September. There you go, Mo. September. What else do we got here? Robert C. With brief border wars hearkening back to the old quad games, are, are there to be any more of this style manner coming up? Or are you waiting to measure its reception? Now, the funny thing is, okay, um, it, de it depends. Again, it's the designers that really um, come up with these ideas, okay? Designers will come up with two battles, and I'll say, well, why don't we get two more? Brian, train a brief border wars. Uh, mm -hmm. We had talked about, well, why don't we to do different games? I said, no, let's do a quad. So I would do quads all the – I don't need to know. Are you waiting for measure of reception? No, not really. If I had games that – if I had a designer give me four battles right. of anything I put in or any type of that thing, I, I do quads. I have no it, – it, it doesn't matter to me about the reception, okay, because I think it's a good – I think it's something that's neat and – it's a value to have quads. But again, it, 
I don't go to designers and tell them, here's what I want you to publish. The only one we do is Adam Stockweather. Okay. okay. I will tell him, you know, I want a game on this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he'll do it. Okay. But every other designer is really, they bring me the ideas. Okay. They've already got it in their mind what they want to do. So I don't go to them with the idea. Fantastic. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Geek City USA. Looking for what you'd recommend to a new reward gamer looking for a one or two player game that is really deep with tons of theme. Well, I think that one's pretty easy. I think that one's pretty easy. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, well, I want to. I want to hear what you say, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you what I. You, put it, you said it first. Come okay. on, I want to hear. What <laughs> I think Interceptor Ace is a great one player experience. The, the depth, how how you know you can better your pilot and and things like that. Then you lose a plane. Then you're out for three weeks, and, and, and it becomes this story. You build this fantastic, wonderful, passionate story about this 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 one pilot, and and his missions and all his sorties. I I, I think I think that's just glorious. Yes, I I would agree, but I I think that if it was a first time person, okay. I. I would get him into like um, a Pacific Tide. Okay. Uh, Oast Creek. Oast Creek, yeah. Maybe. And I actually throw like Lamps games in there. Like Lamps is a very good, even though Herman's there. Uh, it, it Lamps, and my son will tell you, I've had Lamps up on my desk, on my um, ping pong table for a long time. Waiting for that second edition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, lamps is a. I do like that, but I would say that those are. Right, what other ones? Yeah, not for a young kid, a first time war gamer. Right, I don't know. I, um, got a lot of them. I just don't know. I, I would say those are very easy games to play. I, I you know, I, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. I'm I, trying to. I'm trying to think of something else that that might might really hit home there. I think what you're going to see is I think attrition of souls, um, civilization. <laughs> we've got a lot of games coming up that I think are good introductory games to people. Mm -hmm. And, and no. I'll be honest with you, the brief border wars. It's <laughs> a great little. <laughs> That somebody could pick up and play mm -hmm. in a couple hours. I agree. Um, I, we're going to take one more question, and then I want to talk about the Kickstarters you come uh, you have coming up. Okay. Okay. I, I really, I really want to make sure that we cover that and, and let everybody know what you have coming up because that's exciting. Uh, Nathaniel wrote, "Bill Compass is probably the only company that competes with GMT's catalog in terms of breadth of subjects. What is your goal?" My goal is just to, and it's going to sound. My goal is just to try to do the best we can. We don't really compare ourselves to anybody. Mm -hmm. We just take one day at a time and we just try to do the best we can and then we make mistakes. And there's a rat, and we hate it. Nobody mm -hmm. hates me, but but we learn from them, and we go forward. And I just want my really my son's in it. I've got mm -hmm. John Grant, who is um, like my right hand. He's my marketing guy. My God, uh, what a, there's nobody better for an introvert business guy like me. Okay, mm -hmm. to he he's a, he's incredible. To, he's out there. He 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 was the best. Someday I'll tell you the story of that. <laughs> well, I, I hope you'll come on another time. That's oh, what I'm not sure. Great story of how we, how John came on board. I had a chance to to meet John for the first time yesterday. We had talked for about a half hour or so, and uh, wow, what a tremendous guy! And <laughs> and you could see, you could see how much he admires you. And 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 and, and for me, that really shows. Uh, what a great leader is, is when, when your employees look at you and revere you. And I can tell you, John reveres you and, and respects you a lot. And, and the way he talked about you and, and wax poetic. Hey, John, when you get that raise, let me know. All right, bro. 
Uh, it, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. but um, one thing I do want to make up is I do want to say that Adam Stockweather does a good job with us. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've got Ty Bamba doing editor of Paper Wars. And the other thing is, um, and I want to do a shout out. We do have our, do. we do have our convention, mm -hmm. our third year in Connecticut. It's on Veterans Day, Veterans Day weekend. Okay. okay. So I hope we um, we had a great time last year. Okay. It's um it's like a three four day event in Connecticut. I was I I, I was born in Connecticut. I lived in Connecticut for for forever before I came down here to Florida. Where? Uh, I was born. I was no. born. Where did you live? Uh, I was I was born in New Haven. I lived in East Haven, and uh, I met my wife okay. and and we uh, we lived in Plainville for a while. Oh, okay. We're from Cromwell. Which oh, is not all right. too far from Plainville. Yeah, not Jeez, far. At twenty all. minutes. You're near uh, Middleton. Uh, not Middleton. Um, Middletown, yeah, yeah, Middletown. That's yeah, Middletown. Right. Yeah. So oh. we have the convention. We had the convention in Cromwell until the place went out of business, mm -hmm. and now we're having it in America. But it's a great time, and I if anybody's in the area, stop by or come to the convention. So I had to shout that out because – Oh, definitely. And we give 50% off all our games. Um, it's only $45 to come for the whole time. And we give free pizza night. You know, we, we really do it for the customers because without them, we'd be nothing. Listen, if everything goes well, I, I, you know, I, I, I still got my daughter and two grandchildren up there. I'll go visit them, and then I'll come, come visit you for the whole weekend. You have to deal with me for the whole weekend. How would you like that? It's more expensive, huh? Oh, for me, it's more expensive. Yes, you're good. You don't get the forty-five dollar. You pay a hundred. That's that's because the convention's in the United States, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, okay, I, I just wanted to make sure. No, only for you though. Now, here's a, here's a funny little fact here, and, and just to hit on you, War and Pieces, and the way it's spelled out and the way it's made. Oh. Is actually after the old West Hartford show. Yeah. Yes. I used to go there all the time. So I, when when I decided to make this and and I went up there, I went up there after we came down to Florida and after six or seven years, I, I flew back to to Connecticut. I forgot what I had to go for, uh, and I said I'm going to go to War and Pieces. I haven't been there in forever, and I go and it's closed and yeah. and, and and it broke my heart. I loved those guys. I loved I loved everything that they did, and that's they they're the ones that really really would make me buy like all the Europa games from GDW and all that stuff. We probably ran into each other there. I bet you we did. I bet you we did, Bill. We were a lot younger, I'll tell you that much, and we would never. Recognize yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we were a lot younger. I'm actually older than you, believe it or not. <laughs> How old are you? I'm just about sixty. Oh, okay. Well, we're close. We're close. So we we we're, we're pro we probably were there together without a doubt. Yeah, it was but a great I, place. Oh, it was so good. So in honor of them, that's what this segment is. is uh, the, the show is yeah. named after War and Pieces. Just to let you know, there little little bit of tidbit of history. But listen, hey, we we got to get moving along here. Why don't you tell me all about the the kickstarters that you got going, and then as soon as we're done with that, we're going to do our giveaway. Okay, we have um, Jacobite Rising, which is Command and Colors um, Jacobite. Mm -hmm. okay, that's on Kickstarter now. Okay. Okay, and we probably, we have, um, in the next few months, we're going to have Civilization. Whoa. Um, Attrition of Souls. Okay. And what I'm doing is most of my, most of my China games are go on Kickstarter. Okay. Yeah. I think there's a market, you know, I, I don't think Kickstarter people would, and, and maybe I'm wrong. I've toyed about this, putting it up with paper maps. Okay. But, but, but I, I don't think people would, I, yeah, I, I don't think the market's there in that, in that type of situation. So I don't mm -hmm. do those. Okay. It's only in the mounted map when the ones that are manufactured in China that I put up on Kickstarter. Okay, the one that's on Kickstarter right now. Uh, Jack you... White. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, is is that a Richard Board game? Yes. Yes. Okay. Colors. Yep. 
Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, Helen, if you could do me a favor, make sure that you put a link in in the video here so people know. Go check it out. Another Richard Borg Command and Colors games. Uh, how are you guys doing so far? When when did it go up, actually? I went up, um, what, 12 days ago? 12 days ago? Yeah, we're doing good. You're doing good? Good. Yeah. Let's make it do better. Everybody go out there and 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 purchase this and and let's let's make sure that this gets funded and everything's great with it. I mean it's it's Compass Games. You got to want it. There you go. Now, we do a little game here and since you guys are so nice to give away a game that one of you guys out there are going to win a game. Now, how do we do this? In the comments, I'm going to type start now. You are going to put a number from 1 to 100, okay? The person that is closest or hits it on the head wins, okay? Plain and simple. But you got to get the numbers in between start now and stop now. If you get it in after, I'm sorry, you're disqualified. If you put more than one number, you're disqualified, okay? So 1 to 100, all right? 1 to 100. Let's make sure that this is clear. Now, should there be a tie, whoever's closest, if there's somebody, two people that are one away, it doesn't matter if you're high or low, it doesn't matter, there is a roll-off of death, okay? And Helen will let me know who to go first and who to second, and, and then you guys will pick another number, and then we will roll again. But let's not do a roll-off of death today. Somebody just guess what I'm going to roll. And usually, I'm all over the place. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this contest going. And then I'm going to go back. And I think we had a, while we're waiting for the numbers, because we give them a little bit of time because of lag of, of internet and everything like that. See, I got to, I got to put the old man glasses so I can see when I'm typing with my two fingers, because Bill, you wouldn't want to hire me because I can only type with two fingers and I'm slow. <laughs> All right. So, so not now. And there you go. Get your numbers in, folks. Meanwhile, Bill and I are just going to chat about, well, just kind of about everything. Uh, I believe there was one more question here. Ah, here we go. Let's let's click on that. Uh, WLM, what is the status of Napoleon in Napoleon's Imperium, 1798 to 1815, and the Conquistadors, the Spanish conquer of um, the Americas. Wow, that was a mouthful for me. Okay. Napoleon Imperium is a U.S. product. That mm -hmm. is in printing now. It's all done. It's, um, we should have that in the warehouse completed probably mid-summer. Mm -hmm. Now, that is one that I am, even though it has a paper map because it's a, it's a pretty big map, I'm actually going to, right now, put that up on Kickstarter. Okay, because it's that type of a game that mm -hmm. I think. Um, Conquistadors is actually um, actually on the boat here from China. Okay. So it's all done and ready. So it's just be here in four to six weeks. Now, the funny thing is, which is ironic, is at any given time, okay, I've got so many games mm -hmm. that I have to, because of, that I only release like one, I only release two a month. Okay. I have a back, which is incredible. I have a backlog right now of four to five games that are completely done that's just sitting in the warehouse. Whoa, and whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> you need to get those out. No, I, I, <laughs> the problem is, and it really worked for us for COVID. Mm -hmm. We were able to, and it's ironic, Connecticut shut down, but that didn't mean that me and my, and my employees stayed at home, but that didn't mean me, my son, and my wife. We ran a sale, okay, sale, and um, oh, I got to answer that question too. We ran yeah. a company sale, and we released three games during COVID. We shipped over ten thousand games during COVID. Wow! It was just me, run my son in the warehouse most of the time, and he by himself. So I don't want people to think that he was at risk. <laughs> okay, he wasn't. Okay, I, I see a question here. You don't, you don't seem like a guy that would put anybody at risk, to be honest. No, with you. oh god, no, because it's not. It's not about. It's about fun. That's what oh, it's. About. You broke up a little bit. Hold on. Yeah, uh, 
Okay. Okay. Uh, try to uh, try it again. Uh, your is my question worthy? What other companies can print mounted maps? Oh, Europe. Europe. Yeah, you, but but the, here's here's how it goes. It goes China, mm -hmm. Europe, and most expensive to print games. Okay, Europe has mounted maps, but again, you're paying. It's cheaper than the U.S., but it's a lot more expensive than China. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense because you can see what they pay people. Yeah. He, it all boils down to the labor force and what the labor force is getting paid. But, but yeah, um, there's a big place in England that does mountain map games, manufacture. Um, Crusades and Revolution, the – the version is done in, I think, Czechoslovakia. Oh, really? The Czech. Uh... Yeah, we part. Yeah, we partnered with. Um, we partnered with um, an Ital a Spanish company to do that. So. Okay. The deluxe version. Oh yeah, let's see how this works. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can pull this off because normally I don't. Uh, usually, I have a couple extra cameras set up. Oh, of course, I can do this. See, th we're high tech around here. At least that's what I like to think. That's what I like to think. So I just got to share my screen. Uh, we're going to share screen. Uh, we're going to do that. Yeah, that one's good. And boom, look at that, huh? How about that? See? And then we just roll the dice, see? So... That way, nobody thinks I'm making up some of these numbers. <laughs> uh, right, uh, we have Decal Twelve that is the first time headed heading to the Compass Games Expo. He cannot wait. Look at you. Good work. We're glad to have you. Yeah, there you go. See, I'm even thinking of going. What is the process? But it's going to be very expensive at hundred dollars for the whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's only for you. Yeah, I know. Oh, yes. $45 for everybody else, but I'm going to pay a hundred, but that's, don't worry. I'm going to stay at my daughter's so I don't have to get a hotel room. Oh, it doesn't uh, then you get charged more. Yeah. Oh, now you can hit me for 150, right? Bill? 100 for you. So yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Make sure is... Everybody in the planet gets $45 except for you. <laughs> Man, it's great to be loved by compass games, isn't it? <laughs> Good thing we're friends, huh? I hate to say yeah. we're enemies. Yeah. Uh, what is the process from concept to finished products? How long does it take? Oh, my. Oh, God. It can take up to four years. Yeah, it, it really depends on the developer, doesn't it? And it depends. Well, we're unique in that situation, too, because we have outside developers, but we also have um, a Compass team mm -hmm. that develops, okay? And... We and that's even interesting because it has more than one. But it could take. I have projects that take two years, but I have projects that take four years. It all depends on how how good the product is off the sh off the get go. Right, and right. It depends on how um, how it goes forward. But yeah, no, we've had games that have taken four years, and it took. Yeah, uh, you know, I got a question for you. Does your does your son help in the decision making as far as what games you, uh, that you decide to carry? Yes, he does. Okay, that that that's that's probably a neat process. You, you know, sitting there. We have some interesting as he gets more involved. Right. And as, as he look, he never wanted to play any games in, mm -hmm. when he was a kid. Okay, but as he gets more involved, he's mm -hmm. getting very bossy at times. Oh, he's, he, yeah. he's fighting, fighting back. With, uh, oh, he's he's pushing back to the old man, huh? Yeah. And you and I say, oh. You don't take it, do you? Oh, well, yeah. And then he gets the wife. And then he gets Carolyn on the on his side, and they oh, both pick me up. Oh, he plays the mom card on you. Yeah, because she's involved in the – she does stuff for Compass, too. So, so it's uh, – it's, so the two of them, it's unbelievable. It really is. I, I sit back off and say, okay, because they <laughs> – I'm at you both at the same – and it, it's just incredible. <laughs> great employees, I'll tell you that much. No, they really do a good job. Couldn't do it without them. 
Hey, hey, the best, sometimes the best you can have is, is family. That's for dog on sure. All right. So I just typed in the stop now. Now we're going to go right. We're going to do the roll here. It, I hope you guys got your numbers in. Uh, everybody try to keep on it. And uh, let's see. Let's go there. Okay. Here we go, Bill. Bill, I'm going to let you guess a number. What do you think I'm going to roll? 35. 35. Let's see how close you are. If you win, do you get to keep the game? No. <laughs> you have to pay 150. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, I got to say which one's the tens. Good thing. Good thing I saw that, Helen. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go with. I'm going to let Bill Pill. Uh, pick. Red. Which one should be the tens? Red. Red. All right. Okay. Here we go. And the number is. Oh, come on. Come on. The number. Three. The number three. Did anybody think I was going to roll horribly and pick the number three? Wow, three. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, if you picked the white as the 10. Yeah, I would have been close. You would have been close. You would have been close. I think I did, did pick the white. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Uh Kabuki Kid has four. Oh, that's oh. pretty close. Let's 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 see how close. I'm 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 wait, I'm I'm letting Helen figure this out because if I try to figure it out, I'm going to lose my mind. The number is three, folks. Three. Uh, J.K. War Games. I had four. Uh, J. It looks like J.K. War Games and Kabuki both have four. It is roll off of death wow, time. That's amazing. I mean, who would have thought I would have rolled a four, right? I mean, come on. All right, Helen, handle it. Uh, I think because we saw, uh, I think because JK got in here, uh, probably put his four in first. We're going to let him pick first. One to 100. Not, now you got to really think, am I going to roll high or am I going to roll low again? Yeah, you could do the 50 or 50. Kabuki goes 50. All right. All right. Kabuki goes 50. JK Wargaming goes 24. He picks 24, Bill. He's thinking that now he's going to use some of your mojo here and that I'm going to roll that 35. All yeah, right. I think you're going to roll 35. All right. For legal aspects and everything like that. This is now the 10. Remember, the red is the, well, the orange, red, whatever we want to call it, is the 10. Let's see what I roll. Do I roll low again? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, 47. Wow. 47. Kabuki is our winner. She's three away. She's three away. Congratulations, Kabuki. JK War, War Games, thanks for playing. Nice try. We're sorry, but our winner is none other than the mighty Kabuki, who you can find on just about every cast here. You got to love it. All right, there you go. You have just won John Butterfield's Battle of the Bulge. And I want to thank Compass Games for being so gracious to give this game away. Uh, Kabuki, email your, me your address at novaprime860 at hotmail.com. I'll get it over to the everybody over at um, Compass Games. And believe it or not, she's only in New Jersey. Oh. So you could probably throw it to her, Bill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll mail it. All right. There we go. Well, we don't want it to get dinged. Yeah. All right. Listen. Listen, my friend. You are glorious. That's I mean, that's the only way we could put it. You are glorious. The things that you are doing for the war gaming community, the gaming community as a whole, your company is is glorious. You're doing. I, I just can't tell you how wonderful the experiences that you have given to me, that I've spent with my son or myself, playing your games, the passion that you have for for this business. I appreciate everything that you do. You've said it all today. I think we've put a lot of things to bed, and this. This is a fantastic company, folks. Back them. They get a majority of their stuff, 80% of their stuff made in the United States. 
and it's good quality games by great and fantastic designers. And if you notice and you look in their catalog, they don't have Herman Luttman. Okay. So that means they have quality and great games. Okay. Well, we do <laughs> well, we have got, one. Oh, you do have one by Herman? Lamps. Lamps going out. Lamps? I've never played it. Oh, I've no, never played it. He wasn't a designer. He was, oh, he screwed it up. <clears throat> oh, he messed it up? Yes. No wonder why. Yeah, no. no he, yeah, I don't like him. And that, you're never going to bring him back to the company, are you? No, I never will. Okay, there we go. Well, Herman, well, I'll try again, maybe next week. <laughs> well, I just wanted to take it. I enjoyed this. Thank you for having me. And this has been a lot of fun. And hopefully um, we can do it again sometime. Uh, definitely. I would love to have you on again. Uh, Bill, I'm going to have you hang on for a second. And 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 again, I want to thank you for doing this, uh, you know, taking an hour of your time. I know you're very busy and everything that you have going on. And just keep doing what you're doing. And, and I can say for everybody out in the chat there, we really appreciate everything that you do and all the hard work that you and your family put into Compass Games. All right. For myself, Bill, until next time, it's your old pal, Rob. We. We'll see you guys soon. Have a great time, and we'll see you on the next War and Pieces.